This short video examines displacement and militarized borders. It focuses on the UK government's actions in the Syrian civil war, which has resulted in the largest number of displaced people from the Arab Spring conflicts. The UNHCR estimates that there are 6.9 million internally displaced Syrians and 5.6 million living abroad. The UK government and UK arms trade have supported governments who have gassed, bombed, shot at Syrians, have made their attempts to seek refuge excruciatingly difficult and have ethnically cleansed the Kurdish Syrian population. To gain a broader understanding of the UK government and arms trade involvement in the Arab Spring, check out our video on the Arab Spring, link in the description. In the decade leading up to the Syrian civil war, New Labour permitted the sale of chemicals which can be used to make chemical weapons, known as chemical weapon precursors, to President Bashar al-Assad. Despite the fact that at that point Syria was a country of concern and only had the Syrian government's assurance that they wouldn't be used to make chemical weapons. This trade relationship continued during the Cameron government and, appallingly, into the start of the Syrian civil war. As late as January 2012, the UK government granted export licenses for chemicals that can be used as precursors to chemical weapons, though thankfully the introduction of an EU arms embargo led to the licenses being cancelled before the chemicals were delivered. What would happen now that we have left the EU and its associated arms embargoes? A 2014 scrutiny on arms exports and arms controls House of Commons Select Committee commented on the issue. And I quote, the decision of the present government to give two export license approvals for dual-use chemicals to Syria in January 2012, after the civil war had started in Syria in 2011, was irresponsible given that Syria was a known holder of chemical weapons, that Syria was a known non-signatory of the Chemical Weapons Convention, the nature of the Assad regime, that a civil war was raging in Syria. In July 2012, the UK government revoked the precursor chemical export licenses to Bashar al-Assad. On December the 23rd, 2012, the first chemical weapons attack on Syrians by Assad were reported in Homs, causing the death of seven civilians. Eight months later, Assad dropped chemical weapons on the Ghouta suburb of Damascus, killing between 281 and 1,429 people. Whilst it is not clear if previous UK exports were used in any of these attacks, it is clear that the UK government and arms companies are happy to permit the sale of precursor chemicals to despotic leaders willing to gas their own populations. Furthermore, the UK government routinely suppressed attempts at accountability. For example, the then Business Secretary Vince Cable refused to name the two companies who applied for the 2012 export licenses. Those displaced by the civil war have been prevented from leaving Syria. In 2017, the UNHCR reported that while the conflict in Syria and the reasons for displacement continue, few Syrians are able to leave due to restrictive border management by neighboring countries. For example, Turkey has been accused of obstructing and militarizing its border. Human Rights Watch has condemned Turkey for killing people attempting to cross the border. Turkey does this with the help of exported UK weapons, including sniper rifles, machine guns, various types of missiles, and parts for combat helicopters and military combat vehicles. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, 471 civilians, including 86 children, have been killed by the Turkish border guards since the beginning of the civil war. Many of the deaths are of those attempting to escape from Syria into Turkey. Worse still is what US diplomat to Syria, amongst many others, is calling the Turkish ethnic cleansing of Kurds living close to the Turkish border. In late 2019, Turkish-backed groups previously affiliated with ISIS and Al-Qaeda started their cleansing campaign, posting videos of summary executions, mutilated corpses, and threatening Kurds. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights has reported the execution of Kurdish civilians at checkpoints. Furthermore, Human Rights Watch has documented Kurdish homes being confiscated en masse. This forced over 300,000 to flee. Meanwhile, Turkish President Erdogan openly stated that Turkey intends to fill depopulated Kurdish areas with Arab Syrians who currently reside in Turkey as refugees. In short, we supply weapons to Turkey, who is accused of ethnically cleansing Kurds. 
the UK government responded by briefly suspending new arms licenses to Turkey, but it still allowed pre-existing licenses to be honoured. The suspension was short-lived, as by 2020, export licenses started to be approved once again. Export licenses valued at around £481 million were permitted up to the end of 2021. This figure does not include open licenses, which allow unlimited deliveries of certain military equipment and are frequently issued to Turkey. This is despite reports from the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights that Turkish border guards have been shooting and killing Syrians attempting to cross the border and Turkish-led ethnic cleansing of Kurds continues. The UK government also chooses increased militarised borders over genuine help for Syrian refugees along Syria's other borders. For example, in 2015 and 2019, they sent Jordan non-lethal military border aid and training of around 11 million. On the Lebanese border, the UK government has invested 273 million in equipping and training the Lebanese army, including the training of 7,000 military border guards, as well as supplying Lebanon with 38 militarized watchtowers. Rather than run comprehensive refugee resettlement schemes, the UK government opts for militarized approaches. In 2020, for example, we resettled just 829 refugees from Syria. This can be seen in the wider context of militarized borders and armed companies' involvement in both selling weapons that cause people to flee their countries of residence and selling the equipment that puts barriers in the way of them making it to safety. In combination with this, the British government offers very little protection of those people. For example, the UK currently runs resettlement schemes for only three countries. Afghanistan, Hong Kong and Ukraine. All three schemes have been criticised for their lack of effect. Whilst those who seek protection in the UK outside of these schemes are threatened to be sent to Rwanda. In summary, the British government and arms trade have supplied and attempted to supply precursor chemical weapons to Bashar al-Assad, a known non-signatory of the Chemical Weapons Convention during the Civil War, who would go on to gas his own people. They also continue to sell weapons to Turkey, who are shooting and killing Syrian civilians trying to cross into safety, and who are leading a campaign of ethnic cleansing on its border, whilst offering little in terms of protections for those who have fled. Those that defend such arms sales continually state that export licenses are only granted after strict licensing criteria has been met. But as we have seen in this short case study on displacement and border militarization, this is a complete fabrication and such statements could be deemed as laughable if it did not enable such atrocious actions to take place.